Okay, here's example two with tabular integration. So this one's gonna be a little more complicated. Um, it's really not more complicated, there's just more uh, steps, or not really even more steps, just more that we're gonna put in the table. So, um, and really everything else is exactly the same. So, uh, in the last video we did example one, and we talked about what tabular integration is, sort of why it works the way it works, how to set it up. So we'll skip a lot of those details here, um, but we'll go through all the details relevant for this problem. Okay, so what we want to do first is uh, set up our little table. So we have our two columns, uh, derivatives of u, okay, derivatives of u, and then um, integrals or antiderivatives, whichever you prefer, uh, of v primed, okay, integrals of v primed. Okay, so remember what's v prime? v prime is just dv, but without the dx on it, okay? So remember, tabular integration really just is repeated integration by parts. So how do we get u? Um, well, we just get u the same way we do for integration by parts. We go down this uh, list here, see which type of function appears first. So x to the fifth is an algebraic function. e to the x is an exponential function. So uh, algebraic appears above exponential in this list. So we choose u to be the algebraic function. So remember, the first thing we always write down here is u, which is uh, x to the fifth. Okay. So if u is x to the fifth, then dv, okay, so here's u, okay, so then dv is e to the x dx. So uh, what that means is that v primed equals e to the x. Okay, so the first thing we put here is uh, v primed, which is e to the x. Okay. okay. So that's our first row. Now what do we do? Now, um, just like in example one, we take derivatives in this first column, uh, the column on the left, until we get to zero. So x to the fifth, the derivative is uh, 5x to the fourth. Derivative of that is uh, 20x to the third. Derivative of that is 60x squared. Derivative of that is 120x. Derivative of that is uh, 120. Derivative of that is zero. Ugh. All right, uh, so let's extend that. All right, now what we do is just keep taking integrals. Okay, so now we have that. We just keep taking integrals until we get to the zero row. Uh, luckily, this is just e to the x. So if we integrate e to the x, what do we get? e to the x. Uh, integrate it again, what do we get? e to the x. e to the x. e to the x. e to the x. And e to the x. Surprise. Okay. So um, again, it's, we always do the same thing first. Just uh, set this up. Set up this table, get our u based on this liate or whatever it's called, this rule here for integration by parts, because tabular integration is integration by parts. Okay, it's just a repeated integration by parts, just sort of squished together in a compact form. Um, take derivatives of that until you get to zero. Set up your v prime column also. So here's u, here's dv without the dx. Okay, dv is e to the x dx. Take off the dx, you just have e to the x, which is v primed. Okay. Um, and then just keep integrating until you get to the same row where the zero is, okay? Now luckily it's just e to the x, so when we integrate we get the same thing. Um, okay, so now what do we do? So now remember, um, we put them together like uh, this, pair them up like this, diagonal down like that, okay? Zero gets paired up with nothing. Um, so we just, we want to stop at zero because once we, the first time we hit zero, that just tells us where we have to stop. So that's why we go all the way to zero always. Um, and then remember our signs, S-I-G-N signs alternate, um, plus sign, minus sign, plus sign, minus sign, plus sign, minus sign, and then this doesn't matter because zero is not paired with anything. Okay, so putting it all together now, uh, we have integral of x to the fifth e to the x dx uh, equals, um, this tells us positive x to the fifth times e to the x minus, okay, minus uh, 5x to the fourth times e to the x. Okay, remember this uh, pairing up means we're multiplying, right? So multiplying these guys. Um, and then this is plus minus plus minus. So minus 5x to the fourth times e to the x minus 5x to the fourth times e to the x, and then plus 20x cubed times e to the x, plus 20x cubed times e to the x, and then uh, minus 60x squared times e to the x, and then uh, plus 120x times e to the x, 
uh, and I'm just barely running out of room, um, and then minus 120 times e to the x, and then minus 120 times e to the x. Okay, so be careful, this is, one, this is plus 120x e to the x, okay, plus 120x e to the x, and then this is just minus 120 e to the x, minus 120 e to the x, and then don't forget plus c, okay. So uh, that's pretty much, I mean, that really is just it. Uh, now, if you want, you could write this as, um, if we factor out the e to the x, then we'll have this, x to the fifth minus 5x to the fourth plus 20x cubed uh, minus 60x squared uh, plus 120x minus 120, and then plus c outside of the parentheses if you want to do that. Okay. So this is our answer here, um, integral of x to the fifth e to the x dx equals that. So it is possible to do this with uh, integration by parts manually, but because you have x to the fifth, you'll have to do integration by parts five times. Okay? And it's, it's totally doable, but it's just going to take so long. It's going to be such a mess. You'll have minus signs flying around all over the place. Um, it's going to be really easy to uh, mix things up a little bit, um, get a little confused, and kind of it's and not really tricky, I guess. It's fairly straightforward, just repeatedly applying the integration by parts formula. But it's just going to be such a mess because, I mean, look at this answer. It's a terrible, messy answer. Um, it could be a little worse, I guess, but still, it's just it's such a big answer. Uh, it's, it's so long, there's a lot of terms here. So that's, what, uh, that's why we want to use tabular integration. Just take all that integration by parts, squish it all together, make it more compact. Um, that's really all we're doing. We just did integration by parts about five times here. Okay. So um, that's tabular integration. That's example two, which I think uh, illustrates better than example one how useful this is, because this really was not a whole lot of work at all. And we got lucky with the e to the x here. That made this relatively simple. But still, um, you know, derivatives of u, integrals of v primed here, just always do that, always pair them up like this, alternate the signs, positive, negative, positive, negative, and then just slap it all together in the end, okay? And uh, that's really all there is to it. So tabular integration isn't that bad, um, and it really helps us uh, make problems like this much simpler than they would uh, be otherwise. Okay, so that's example two with tabular integration, and here's our answer here. Okay, so you could factor out the e to the x if you want, or you could leave it in like that. Uh, but whatever happens, don't forget the plus c for indefinite integrals. Okay, it's an indefinite integral, so don't forget the plus c. Okay, so that's example two. Example three coming up next.